House 2 was another horror film I watched all the time as a kid, and like the first one, I haven't seen it in 25 years. Here's what I remember. Old Man Zombie, Bill Maher, and thinking Ari Gross was a movie star, and then not understanding why there weren't more Ari Gross movies afterwards. Oh right, House 2, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I remember that too. Jesse and his lady friend move into a house he's inherited from his parents, even though that doesn't seem to gel with the events we witness in the film's opening scene. As a matter of fact, the opening scene really doesn't make any sense at all, but whatever. This house is some kind of set designer fever dream. Who the hell decorated this place? Is it a castle? A temple? What the hell? We're never quite sure who Jesse and his lady are as people, and then two friends of theirs, well, maybe they're friends, it's never really clear, they show up and aren't much better defined. In any case, the ladies don't stick around long after the guys get the idea to go dig up Jesse's ancient relative to see if he has a crystal skull buried with him. As you do. It's there, but Jesse's great-great-grandfather is there too, still alive, waiting to be dug up. After an initial scare, Gramps hangs out with Jesse and Charlie, telling stories about the Old West and such, while being amazed by all the new things in the world. They are surprisingly okay with an old man zombie just hanging out with them, although on occasion it turns into a Three's Company episode, as they have to hide him from certain people who might not be as okay with it. Gramps has an arch nemesis though who wants the Crystal Skull back, and soon all kinds of fantastical elements are woven into the story from all different eras, as the house also seems to contain portals to other dimensions. Ethan Wiley, who wrote the first house, writes and directs this installment of the still at this point promising franchise. Unfortunately, it was essentially the beginning of the end for it. If you haven't noticed by now, House 2 the second story has zero connection to the first film except maybe for the fact that Jesse buys his t-shirts at the same place Roger Cobb gets his sweaters. Conceptually, I like the idea of standalone haunted house movies all using the house branding. However, in hindsight, they all needed to stay at least somewhat tonally similar. House was an R-rated horror movie that was mostly okay to show your older kids. House 2 is a PG-13 rated adventure movie that your kids would probably try to get you to watch. The effects here are nifty, but also cute and appeal more to children than to the horror crowd. Much of it feels like an Amazing Stories episode mixed with that Chuck Norris movie, Firewalker. Also, one of the best aspects of House was that it didn't complicate its narrative with lots of backstory. House 2 is just oversaturated with it. This is a mishmash of dozens of different cultures and eras and historical events, and so much of it just isn't necessary. Tone problems aside though, there's still some good stuff in House 2. Royal Dano is the most charming and sincere old man zombie ever on film. His performance really helps keep you interested. Also, Bill Maher is just straight up playing 80s man in this, which is amusing. Hey buddy, what's cooking in the kitchen? Nothing. I'm pretty sure once this thing called the Caterpuppy shows up, I can hear Frank Welker making noises for it, which is always a plus. Here's Kane Hodder getting a line of dialogue before being thrown over a balcony. And like the first house, the film's final villain sports the most impressive makeup. I really love the design of it. Now, I gotta take issue, jokingly of course, with this one bit where after repairman John Ratzenberger helps them find yet another alternate dimension entrance in their house, Looks like you got some kind of alternate universe in there or something. They rescue a virgin who is about to be sacrificed, played by Devin De Vasquez from Society. What's amusing is that after rescuing her from death and bringing her to their world, they make her serve them food. I mean, come on, guys. The primary bonus feature on Arrow Video's Blu-ray for House 2 is an hour-long documentary, which basically sums up the film like this. They gave it a shot, it didn't work, that's a shame, but some people like it. Sounds like it was a fairly straightforward production, save for stunt coordinator Kane Hodder's numerous injuries, which he goes into detail about. There's also a commentary track with writer-director Ethan Wiley and producer Sean S. Cunningham, and 15 minutes worth of vintage promo interviews, which includes this fun bit from John Ratzenberger. Another guy in a uniform, another dork. I'm, I'm America's leading uh, uniform dork actor, basically. Arrow's Blu-ray for House 2 is included in the same set with House, so like Waxwork 2, it's basically like an extra feature, which makes it a little easier to recommend. On its own though, House 2 is fine, it's watchable, you can watch it. You may or may not be like me and think it's a shame it doesn't do more with its potential, but overall, it's decent. 